hello and welcome everyone to this few hours long uh, ruby programming tutorial and in this video what i'm going to teach you guys is how do you program in ruby and if you are new to programming uh, you, you want to learn ruby and you're most welcome over here in this course and this is going to be a free, free video on youtube uh, it's going to be a few hours long and i'll put all the things all the basics all the advanced things for ruby in here and there will be will as we go through the uh, course and i will be teaching you guys how you can code in ruby and also if it's your first time don't worry and if you really haven't touched code ever in your life so you're most welcome you can take this uh, video course and learn uh, ruby programming or i hope you will learn a lot of great things from this course and my name is alvi and i'll be teaching you how you can code in ruby so let's start with our video program so the first thing we're gonna learn is variables and how this video is gonna work is i will go in repelit which is a online live coding tool you can use to write your code and see the results live in your browser so you don't have to install or anything you don't have to install any software for running our code the code i'll be showing you guys so it's very easy and and, and as we go through the program i will give you some, some exercise and quizzes so you guys can uh, fix them or you guys can solve them yourself and learn as we go so okay so we are in our code editor and the first topic is um variables and data types in ruby so f before that the uh, thing i want to you guys to teach is about the repelit interface so you can go to repelit.com and create an account and then you can select ruby and then open up a it will open up a window like this so in here is the our console so if you run our uh, code it will show up over here as a result uh, and think it's installing some stuff right now okay so the first thing is in ruby i'm gonna teach you is how do you print something to our console so in this uh, video we're gonna check out uh, anything you write in this editor and how do you actually see the results of what you write and what the program is doing how can you see the results in the console so for that we need to print uh, something to the console or else we will never know what's happening with the values that we are working with so for that uh, in ruby you can use few things uh, we have puts for printing things and also we have print you can use p the p function or method you can use any of these to print something to the console so if i show you guys puts my name and if i run it click on run and it will show up right over here as you can see it's showing up my name in the console and you can also use print if you want it, that will also print the uh, value in the console so the difference between puts and print is puts gives you a space and print doesn't give you a space so for example let's say i put one and then i uh, print two and then i print three and if i run it after the one it will give us a space like a new line and then it will print out the rest in one single line so print is uh, like it will print and it will not leave a new line it will be printing in one same line but puts what it will do is it will give you a new line like this so it's going to be in the below uh, above below your code so that's puts and print also you can use uh, p which will also print in the console but it will give you uh, quotations around it so like this since this is a string it's giving us quotations if we print an array it will give us the entire array in one line but with puts it will not give you uh, all the items of the arrays so when we learn array we're going to learn more about that okay so this is how we will be printing everything all our data in our console so in programming we most of the time we are working with some kind of data let's say uh, you are what, checking facebook or instagram all the data you see um post uh, any instagram post likes comments everything is some sort of data we are working with so for example uh the number of likes is a number we can store any kind of number like this so this is basically we are making a variable and we are assigning a value 
and this value can be uh, anything it can be any uh, data type that we have available in ruby so it can be a number so there are many types of data types so i'll just list them list them out over here so data types there is numbers string there is array there is uh, hash so these are the most common ones in any programming language whether this is ruby python or anything these are all the common data types you will be working with so let's say in an instagram post you have five likes so that data is getting stored somewhere and when we are working with the data we are working with numbers which is a data type and anything related to text is a string so anything that is a text let's say your instagram post that's a string and an array is basically a data type where we can store multiple values of different data types let's say multiple numbers multiple strings we can store in an array and use that in later so for example you might when you go to instagram you can see not only one post you can see a lot of posts and then you scroll down and it's, the list keeps going and going so that these are basically uh, array of posts so on array have a uh, multiple posts let's say five or six posts and they, they are displaying it on the screen and these are some uh, real world example of how you can use these data types in any uh, real world scenarios uh, might be so these are uh, some data types we'll be working with so for variable what is a variable is basically we are storing these data types in a box or in a container and we can work with them let's say we have five likes and we have the post which is i love cat let's say this is our post this is five likes and we can go comments equals let's just put some dummy comment one two three just imagine these are some sort of comments looks like the ai filled filled my content it's very cool so comments cats are cool cats are awesome so these are our comments is in list of strings so basically anything with the text and wrapped inside the quotation is a string and anything that this normal numbers are numbers an array is basically you put the brackets and inside you put a list of other data types let's say a string over here and as you can see we have to put commas after each value so these are the data types and we are assigning these to a container so anything we name before the equal sign this is a container this is the variable so we can assign this number to this container and later we can use it let's say we want to print it and we can do puts likes and if i hit run it will put 5324 in our console as you can see over here so anything in a variable we can use or we can change the value and another thing we can do is reassign the value which is let's say the likes is 5324 we want to change it to only 53 so i can just uh, reassign it so likes equals 53 so now we are printing likes over here and it will override this value with 53 and print 53 so if I hit run and as you can see the console it printed 53 so these are some uh, common ways that you can declare variables so variables are nothing uh, complicated it's just a container and you store values in a container so later you can use let's say in some real world scenarios like a uh, users uh, you are storing a list of users there's going to be an array of let's say hashes with a different type of data so hash is another data type uh, let's give an example of a hash let's say we are storing a users so user equals so we will put these brackets curly braces and in inside there we can put key value pairs for our data any type of data we want to store let's say our user has an age which is 23 and we can store that like this and later we can access these values let's say puts you so the syntax of printing a key from a hash is this you put the braces or brackets and inside we put the key name which is age and it will print 23 and 
as you can see it's printing 23 but if you want to print the entire object itself on um, our hash in other programming language it might be called objects uh, in javascript it's called object in python it's called dictionaries and in different programming languages it might be referred as different thing but it's all the same there is this key value pairs information we store in key value pairs and this is basically a way to represent our data in more elegant way let's say we can have a user with his name you can have another key called name and his name is john and his age is 23 so this is a user and we can store all this information in this hash and later we can make like arrays of hashes so that's going to be we can store multiple users and display them in our screen so this is very interesting in coding is that you can do a lot of things like uh, storing information like working with data it's so fun and interesting all right everyone so now it is quiz time and we will have three problems as you can see we have three problems uh, for every topic we're gonna have three to four or maybe five problems and so the goal of this quiz is um, you thinking about code and try to solve these easy problems so if you're new to programming it will help you a lot uh, practice th um, these things so we have three problems over here and I'm gonna explain the problem and I'm gonna tell you to pause the video and try it yourself and come back again and solve it I see the solution if you can't so the first problem we have we have we are saying to do three step and write a program for that we have three instructions as you can see three steps basically so the first instruction saying is uh, create a variable called name and assign it to the value john and the second is create another variable called age and assign it to the value 30 so john this should be a string and we're gonna assign it to a variable called name and the number which is his age is going to be a type of number and it's gonna go into age and lastly you're gonna print a message saying my name is John and I am 30 years old basically whatever you put in name and age should come in here and here as a replacement so think feel free to Google and let's go to the solution so basically we're gonna write a variable called a John so first the variable name is actually name so the variable name is name and then we put an equal sign and then we write the value since John is a text type of thing we're gonna do make it a string and we're gonna say John so this is our variable and the next is we're gonna make an age equals 30 so you can do age and then put an equal sign and put the value 30 we can, you can put anything you want let's say 59 and you can change the name whatever you want um, John Doe and last is we're gonna print uh, so as you can see the AI give me a hint so for printing this what we're gonna do is write puts for printing a string and inside we're gonna say uh, my name is and in here we want the value from uh, the name variable go inside here so how we can do that in Ruby is basically put in hash and put the curly braces and inside anything you put it can be a variable outside this string so as an example a name so as you can see the syntax highlighting is also there it's turned white so anything you put inside the hash and curly braces is a, a variable you can do anything like mathematical operations uh, anything you can do outside a code like an expression you can put over here and it is gonna go output and put that inside that string so let's say name so my name is and then anything in the name variable is gonna replace right over here and we put a comma and I am 30 years old or 59 years old so same thing we're gonna do this so basically we are replacing this part anything that's inside age and we're replacing it over here okay the AI the AI was bothering me just giving me all complete so I turned it off and let's move on to the second problem which is you have a variable X with the value 5 and a variable Y with the value 3 
Swap the value of these two variables without a temporary variable and print the values of x and y after swapping. So, so first let's make two variables x equals 5 and another one is y and we put an equal sign and put another value which is 3 and it's saying swap the values of these two variables without using a temporary variable. So you're gonna swap x with y and y with x so you can do you can reassign the values like x equals you can do x equals y so what this is gonna do is it's gonna take the value of y which is 3 it's just gonna return 3 and it will assign to x and if you print x over here after this line it will be 3 and not 5 and if we do y equals x that's basically replacing that will replace the value of y with the value of x so we are reassigning the y with x so this is gonna swap the value so if we print over here if we put let's say x equals then we can uh, put the value of x like like this right here we did dynamically so we can do the hash and the curly braces and inside we're gonna put x and we can put a comma y equals same thing again curly braces we can put y inside not dollar curly base and that's it it's gonna print out the value of x and y so what do you think the value of x and y is it's not 5 and 3 it's 3 and 5 because we swapped the value over here so if i run it as you can see we're getting the result x equals 3 y equals 3 now why is y equals 3 <laughs> because but because the reason is uh, we did swap but we are swapping it in later place we are swapping it very late because we already have um assigned x to y and this becomes 3 and now if we are swapping again y equals x well this is becoming 3 so it's, we are getting the same value as y but we don't want that we want the uh, old value which is x equals 5 to go inside y so we cannot do like this we cannot write after one assignment and expect it to get five we have to assign in one line so so in ruby we can do that very easily uh, we just have to write it like this this is syntax x comma y equals y comma x so this is basically uh, doing the same thing by in one line in one go so nothing is getting uh, reassigned and we are not getting any wrong values basically we are not getting the value of y into y again we are getting the value of x which is 5 because we are uh, reassigning in one line so now if i click run as you can see it's printing x equals 3 y equals 5 so we can successfully swap the values of this problem so let's move on to the problem 3 in problem 3 we have to do a simple calculation so create a variable called price and assign it the value 25.99 create another variable called quantity and assign it to the value 5 calculate the total cost by multiplying price and quantity and store it in a variable called total cost and print that total cost to the console so pause the video and try it out yourself see if you can do it if not uh, follow along with me now so we're gonna make a variable called price and we're gonna assign it to 25.99 and we're gonna make another variable quantity and we're gonna assign it to the value 5 now what is want us to do is calculate the total cost so we're gonna multiply the price with the quantity and we're gonna get the total cost so we can store that total cost in another variable called cost and we can assign it to price times quantity so now we have the result inside this new variable called cost which is multiplying basically the price and the quantity so basically price is 25.99 and the quantity is this anything that re this returns is going to go inside cost automatically and we can print it over here let's say we're going to print it like this puts the total cost is cost like this we can do it in one line we can print so the total cost is the cost this is gonna got replaced by the price times quantity whatever this variable has and that's basically the price and the quantity multiplying and get it giving us a result so if I run it so as you can see it's giving us the result the total cost is 129.95 which is our total cost 
and if you want to uh, do it fancy you can put a dollar uh, let's say just to show that it's a currency in dollars so as you can see it's saying the total cost is 129.595 so that's it for this quiz for data types um, and variables these are very simple uh, problems that I hope you guys all solved all right everyone so now we're gonna look at some numbers and maths in Ruby uh, some mathematical operations and everything so everything in Ruby is an object and numbers are also objects we're gonna learn more about why in future so for now we're gonna learn about a um, math operation so in Ruby as you saw earlier we can do uh, any type of math operations addition subtraction multiplication you can do any of them let's say um, 3 plus 3 hit run it's gonna give us 6 obviously you have to um, print it with puts and it's gonna give us 6 as you can see any type of math operations uh, you, do, you can do multiplication so that's giving us 9 so these are these are called expressions a mathematical expression and this will evaluate to a um, value so and we can store this value let's say in a variable uh, we can call it a variable var and we can store any type of mathematical expression that we want let's say adding um, two numbers and we can put var it's gonna give us a uh, 3 plus 4 which is 7 so 7 is the result of uh, 3 plus 4 uh, Ruby is evaluating this result looking at this expression and putting storing it in a variable called var and as we wrote over here it's printing it to our console and something we can do let's say we want to increment the value let's say we have a value called var equals 0 and we want to increment it increment it to 1 so we can do it easily with uh, reassigning the variable again so var equals var plus 1 we can do like this so it's gonna take the old value and add a 1 to it so let's see if we have 3 then it's gonna add 1 and so basically var this is gonna get replaced with 3 and 3 plus 1 is 4 and 4 is going to new vary a value of var so if we run it as you can see it's giving us 4 over here these are basically a simple way to increment your variables anything you have and uh, you if another thing is uh, you can do exponents as well let's say you want uh, three arrays the this to the power of two and you can do a double multiplication sign and anything you want the power to be uh, three or two so um, let's make it simple two so two twos are four and if we run as you can see it's giving us four if we do another one three is the power of two and run it it's gonna give us eight so basic math and uh, this is basically math from your school uh, if you seen uh, basically it's doing uh, giving the power three two twos and it's basically um, multiplying two three times so this is the same thing as saying uh, two times two times two same thing if it's uh, four then same thing uh, times multiplied four times so these are exponents and you can express them very easily like this with a double multiplication sign let's talk about division in ruby so every time you do division uh, it's a little weird because it rounds your uh, decimals down so it's not going to show the decimals by default so if you have um, SA7 divided by 2 so you are expecting it to give 3.5 but it's not going to give 3.5 if we run so 7 divided by 2 is giving us 3 but the result is actually 3.5 right but it's not it's not going to give you by default the decimal points every time you do division it's gonna floor it to the lowest number so even if it's a 0 0.99 some number 0.99 9 is not going to show the 99 it's going to show the number itself so let's say 4.99 is the result of some operations it's not going to show anything uh, it's not going to even show 5 it's going to clearly show floor it's going to floor it down round it down and show the lowest number but if you want the uh, actual with the value with the decimal points what you have to do is turn one of these into a float so only way 
or for Ruby to show is if you have one of these as a float so so we have different type of numbers right we have integers and floats and other types so float is basically a number with decimal point let's say 7.3 is a float but 7 itself is a integer 8 is an integer so anything without the decimal uh, is a integer even 0 is an integer so every number is basically an integer but if you want to make it a float you can just put a point zero and it's, it's gonna make a f this uh, seven a float and now ruby knows that it needs to show the decimal point as well so it's gonna show 3.5 as you can see it's printing 3.5 in the console this is a basic way of how you can uh, do mathematical operations and as you can s already saw you can increment easily so another simple way of incrementing is uh, this syntax which is plus equals so anything you put after this basically it's gonna take the old value and add it to the new one so um, if i put 2 so it's 3 plus 2 which is 5 but well, this is another way of uh, incrementing a variable uh, also you can do subtraction as well so 3 minus 2 is 1 as you can see it's printing also you can do um, it very easily in ruby and let's talk about order of math operation let's say we are uh, printing we're doing multiple uh, operation at once let's say we are adding 3 with 2 and we are also doing multiplying with by 3 again so in here it's gonna maintain an order of which should it do first should it do the multiplication first or should it do the addition first it's basically same similar as a normal arithmetic so basically it's gonna do the multiplication first and then it's gonna do the addition if you don't have any bracket that's the default behavior is uh, it's gonna do it in order and it's gonna do it every time in the same order and if you have let's say you have mul uh, brackets and then it's gonna break that order and it's gonna follow your order the how you defined so you s you're saying in 3 plus 2 and you put the bracket so it's that's 6 times 3 so that that's gonna turn it out as 18 but that's not 18 that's 15 because uh, it's actually not 6 5 3, 3 plus 2 is 5 and uh, times 3 is 15 so basically however you uh, put the brackets it's gonna do the uh, expression inside the brackets first then it's gonna do the rest of the expression and give you the output also something i want to show you guys is how you can get the remainder of um, a division let's say you are dividing 7 by 2 and then what is the remainder though you can get it very easily with the modulo operator if you do modulo 7 modulo 2 so it's gonna give you the remainder as you can see we are getting the remainder 1 so you can use the modulo operator to check if a number is even or odd easily if it's uh, 1 and that is uh, not even and if it's 0 and that's even because 2 is goes perfectly into uh, even numbers and there is no remainder for that so that's this is pretty much it for this section uh, we looked at number expression math operations incrementing values incrementing and other stuff uh, eva how ruby evaluates the expressions uh, order of math operations also exponents and next we're gonna learn more about strings and working with strings and also we're gonna later we're gonna look at why everything in ruby is objects all right now we're gonna look at more on strings so we'll be uh, learning concatenation with strings string interpolation uh, we already looked at string interpolation but we will um look it in depth uh, how it affects uh, single code and double quotes and also you're gonna learn about user input taking uh, input from the user so as you already know a string is basically anything inside this quotations uh, this is a string and it, you can write any type of type of text this is a way of ruby uh, representing text data so you can put anything in here i love cat any type of text you want and you can do is you can also store that in a variable you know you can store that in a variable uh, let's say var equals and then you can store that inside a variable <coughs> so that's our string and some things we can do with the string is we can uh, concatenate multiple strings so let's say we have i love cat and you want to add another line so you can actually just uh, put a plus and uh, say a new line I also love dogs so what this is going to happen right now is it will take this string and it's gonna add to this string and I added a space over here because 
concatenating is not gonna add any spaces so if I have only this and if I put bar as you can see it has no spaces in here but if I want spaces I either have to add them in the end of the first one or in the beginning of the last one or I can add another space as a string with empty space that has nothing so this also works so if I run it as you can see it's printing out I love cat and there's a space and I love I also love dogs so this is uh, called string concatenation we are basically adding multiple strings together and something you can do with string concatenation also this also applies to variables if you have two variables let's say you have first name and you have a last name and you want to add them together so you can do it very easily you can just have to do first name plus last name as you can see it's printing out MLV without the spaces because um, concatenation is not gonna add any spaces so you have to add it yourself in the middle right like this as you can see I added a space and it's showing up in here as a space so this is called a string concatenation if you want you can store this the value that comes from this into another variable let's say you call it full name equals and it's gonna add up the first name and the last name with the space and it will format it and it will save it in a the variable called full name and we can print the full name so same thing as before it's printing out my name as you can see so this is very common practice in programming that you add up multiple strings uh, whether you wanna do something with the string uh, uh, it's either like adding first name last name or some other operations uh, related to your specific data so you can do it very easily and something that you can do as well in uh, Ruby is interpolation th that we saw earlier already so something you can do is if you don't want to write all this uh, concatenation plus plus and you have a large string and you don't want uh, to write uh, spaces like this manually so you can something you can do is write an interpolation with the uh, hashes and the curly braces and put the variables inside there so if I make another variable called full name and by the way this this is a comment in Ruby so anything any line has in having a hash on from the front is going to be ignored by Ruby so this will this line of code will never run it will ignore also as you can see I wrote my topics over here this is also a comment so these are going to be ignored so you Ruby don't care about this is in a comment you can write any type of English you want you can store your uh, comments in Ruby alright so first thing interpolation you have to use double quotes you can't you cannot use the single quotes because not gonna work in single quotes so you, you must need double quotes for this but for concatenation you can still use single quotes if I show you guys if I write all of this rewrite all of this in single quotes it's still gonna work so single quotes let's print as you can see it's still printing out my name with single quotes but with interpolation you have to you must do use double quotes so if I do double quotes and I can just do the hash sign followed by the curly braces and inside I can put a variable I can put a first name and I can put a space like this normal space and I can put a last name so this will this space will be counted and it will print it out over here so we can do string interpolation very easily like this and you have to remember it has to be inside the double quotes and anywhere you want to replace something with a variable just do the hash and the curly braces and inside you can put any type of variable you want so you can make him add more stuff to it like you can add my name is and then this is gonna print out the name you can put a full stop in the end and let's rename this to greeting and you can run it as you can see it's printing out the entire string but if you want to do it with concatenation you can still do it but you have to add the spaces you have to keep track there's gonna go a space over here and here also you have to add the full stop on the end so there's going to be a lot of concatenating but for a larger string it's better to do interpolation which is very easy and now let's look at uh, how can we take uh, their usernames from them instead of we hard coding over here so in Ruby if you want to take user input so there is a um, method built in that you can use let's say 
we want to take the full name of the user let's remove all of that full name equals and we want to take the input from the user and store it in this variable so you can use this method called gets and if I print the full name now if I go in the console and click over there as you can see it's giving us uh, this to type our name so you can type our name and click enter and it's outputting it over here so we can do cool thing like uh, make a greeting from it uh, from the user uh, let's say we're gonna make a uh, greeting equals and we're gonna do the double quotes and we'll say uh, nice to meet you mister and then we're gonna put the hashes and the uh, curly braces and inside we're gonna do the full name and now if we run this let's add our name hit enter as you can see it's saying uh, nice to meet you mister and the name and the problem is some problem we can see is that it's giving the full stop in the next line instead of giving it over here so we want our uh, sentence to add end in here and then we want the uh, full stop but what it's doing is basically in here if we uh, print it with a p instead of put so you can see there is an escape sequence going on in here so if i print it with um, p and let's add a name as you can see we have a slash n which is an escape sequence saying that we want a new line and when you do it with put settings it's gonna actually uh, evaluate and it's gonna put the new line after the name but we don't want that we want to remove this escape sequence so you can do it very easily using this method that comes inside the gets so it's called gets.chomp so what this gets.chomp is gonna basically do is gonna remove uh, any escape sequence and we're gonna just get the single line uh, name so if I run it again hit enter and as you can see it's giving us in all in one line so escape sequences are only gonna work inside a uh, double quotes it's not gonna work inside single quotes so if okay so that's basically a string interpolation and we can take user input like this with catch.chomp and this is basically a method that's gonna wait for the console to use the user enter something and it's gonna store that inside this variable and later we can use it to print that information in the console again so that's the difference between a single code and a double code is uh, in a single code you cannot use the escape sequence so um, for example if you have uh, let's say greetings and you want to make a new line like this you cannot do it in a single code but in a double code you can do it so if I run it as you can see it's doing greetings then a new line and it's uh, using the escape sequence and it's putting uh, the A S D F on the next line but if it were to be a single code it's not gonna work as you can see it's ignoring the escape sequence so that's the difference between the double quotes and single quotes is in a single code you cannot use the escape sequence let's say in some cases you want to use uh, another single code inside let's say you want to write I am like this but this is interfering with the entire string because it Ruby is thinking this is the string and this is a string without uh, missing code as shown is thinking like this but you want to ignore this we want to ignore this apostrophe so you're gonna do a black slash and it's gonna basically ignore uh, the apostrophe in a single code in a double code you don't have to worry about it because it doesn't make any conflict so you can write my name and let's remove the inputs and if I run as you can see it's printing our name over here and if the double quotes you don't have to give any slashes or anything it's gonna work automatically because it doesn't care about the single code inside so if I run without uh, with a double quote it's gonna work automatically as you can see it's working that's basically and uh, for this session we learned about it concatenation interpolation uh, how we can take user input single code versus double quote and in the next section we're gonna look at some other things uh, related to booleans uh, values true false all right we are now it's quiz time for strings so we have three problems and um, we're gonna do it one by one so let's start with the problem one so create two variables first name and last name and assign them to your uh, first and last name and concatenate the two variables and create a full name and store it in a variable called full name and we're gonna print a message saying hello and the name so this is a very easy problem we already looked at how we can do uh, the first name last name full name so you can just write it real quick and feel free to try it out yourself if you get stuck follow along so first name is M last name is Alvi 
full name equals first name plus remember we have to give a space because string concurrency doesn't take a, an automatic space all right then we can just put hello and then we can put a comma and we can do uh, interpolation over here we can put the full name and let's run this as you can see it's saying a uh, hello and my name all right the second problem is very simple as well so create a variable called city and assign it to your favorite city and create another variable called temperature and assign it to your temperature value and any temperature you want use the string interpolation to print a message to the console like this this temperature the temperature in the city is the temperature of the variable and uh, in degrees so you can write let's say city equals let's just call it x and let's make a temperature let's say temperature is uh, 19 degrees celsius and we can uh, console log this easily with puts the temperature in city is the temperature and the degrees and if we run it seems like a misspelling i'm gonna just copy the correct spelling and run it again as you can see it's working the temperature in uh, x is uh, 90 degrees let's uh, look at problem 3 so this is about user input ask the user for their name using gets method and store it in a variable called username and ask them for age and use string interpolation to print a personalized greeting like this hello then the name and you are two years old the age so let's get the user name first equals to gets dot chomp remember you have to do chomp because or else it will make a escape sequence and it's gonna mess up our string and user age is going to be same gets dot chomp and we can make it a little interesting before getting the user input we can actually ask them let let's uh, give you red what is your name you can print what is your name then it is gonna write their name and we can do another puts or what is your age and after we get all the variables we can uh, make a greeting hello and the name is user underscore name you are user underscore age years old and we can print it in the console with puts puts greetings let's run it so it's asking what is your name my name is alvi click enter what is your age i am let's put three <laughs> and click enter hello alvi you are three years old look at that so cool quiz um very easy problems just for learning purposes i put them uh, make them very easy so everyone can follow along so these are the uh, problems for string uh conversation interpolation uh, taking user input so very simple problems and next we are going to be looking at uh, booleans all right so in this section we will talk about booleans and nil and comparison operators and how they return us a boolean so in ruby or in general in programming we have uh, these values this is another data type you can think of is uh, booleans so there are basically two booleans in any programming language so it's true and false it's true meaning some condition is true a uh, false means uh, comparison or condition anything is can be a false so these are the different states of um, data you can use so con in, a, in a condition you can use them to check whether a comparison is true or false and depending on that you can take some action so if today is rainy then you don't go outside if it's not then you can go outside so it's a simple real world example and another value we have is nil so nil uh, basically is emptiness state in ruby in other programming language you, you might see it as null or something so for example you might have a first name equals m but what if you don't have a name or so you can you can uh, make a this uh, emptiness state as nil so you don't have anything in the variable called first name so it's empty so this this is a um, thing that you will see common in many programming languages so for the booleans uh, so different comparison operators will is gonna return a boolean depending on if the comparison is correct or not so if i show you a quick example you can compare uh, two numbers let's say three and you can say double equals three so with the double equals what it's gonna do is gonna compare the number on the left and the number on the right right and it's gonna check if they are equal if they are equal it's gonna return true else it's gonna return false so if i do three equals equals four this is gonna return false because 
3 is not equals to 4 so this is um these are few uh, comparison operators i wrote here so double equals is the if checking for checking it two uh, things are equal so you can also do it for same as string puts um a is equals equals a this is gonna return true you can do a equal equals b or smaller case a is gonna return false because the case doesn't match so ruby is case sensitive and so basically with comparison operators what they do is uh, they compare two type of data and they will return true or false uh, depending on if the comparison passes or not and then you can use that information to take some decision in a condition so you're gonna learn about condition in future but for now just keep in mind that this is uh, getting evaluated to a boolean value um, and you can also compare uh, with the, uh, greater than or less than or this is uh, not equal uh, so if we want to check let's say 3 not equals 4 that's gonna return a true because 3 is not equal to 4 but 3 is equals to 3 so this is returning true and not equal basically uh, means that something is not equal this is normal plain english and you have to keep in remember you have to use the double uh, equal sign because uh, single equal sign we use to assign a variable and give it a value and we cannot use a single uh, equal sign for comparison some comparison of the two values so if i print them as you can see it's giving true false true false and true so basically these are um, type of data you can use and you can use them in condition and check if something is true and then you can take some action obviously this is false you can take another action and um, another thing to keep in mind and if you if i do um, puts true as a string and hit enter run as you can see it's printing the true same as the boolean but in some cases if you are trying to print with puts then you might be confused maybe there is a string true and it's not a boolean and the, your code is not working and you don't know how to debug so remember when you're trying to print um some data if you use p tag the p method or function and then you can run it it's gonna actually if this is a string it's gonna put the quotation around it but if it's a boolean let's say true bo the boolean it's not gonna put the quotation because that's a boolean and not a string and if i run it so so true with the p the first one is giving us with quotation and the second one is giving us without uh, the quotation that's because that's a real boolean and you can also check whether uh, some number is greater or, or less than you can do one is one less than three that's gonna return true you can do is three less than or equal to three so that's gonna return true as well because three and three they are equal but if you do puts three less than equal to uh let's say two so that's gonna return a false and as you can see it's returning all these data in the console so true or false are basically a uh, type of uh, data type is, you can think of so boolean data type and you can use them to compare certain data and later you can learn how it can we use them in a condition and to take certain actions so if a username matches then how can we give them the access or if the password is matching then how can we give the user a login access you know so we're gonna learn that simply with our console so you can also assign the true or false in a variable as well so you can say uh, var1 equals true var2 equals false and you can print them as well var1 and let me comment out the rest of the code and run it again as you can see the first var1 is true and it's printing true in the console as well so you can print them as well you can also do comparison between boolean so you can say uh, is var1 equals to var2 this is gonna give us a false but if we make them all true this is gonna give us a true so you can also compare uh, two booleans with the comparison operators and you can also reassign booleans let's say we want, don't want var1 to be true you can reassign it to be false and if i run it it's gonna turn a different data so it returned false so this basically these are another type of data we can use in some conditions so for example if i show you a simple condition so um, you can write a condition with a if statement so you can write if a var1 equals var2 and then we can do and it didn't print anything because var1 equals var2 is not going to be true because we changed the var1 to be false 
but if we change it to true again so var1 is true var2 is also true and then this is gonna return us true and in an if statement anything returning true is gonna run this block of code if it's not true it's not gonna run inside anything inside this block and it's gonna pass and it's gonna go to the next line so if i run it again it's printing this is equal and uh, again we're gonna learn more about if statement in future so we're gonna learn if else statement switch statement we're gonna look at them all all right so now we will be talking about methods return values and arguments um, that we pass in methods so methods is something that belongs to an object and we said before that everything in ruby is an object so numbers uh, strings everything is an object and they can have different type of method and we can access these methods and they will return us some value depending on what the method is doing so for example if we do uh, take a number and this the number has a method called dot next so the syntax is basically next is the name of the method and we run it by saying the dot on the object itself so 3 is the object so we're saying dot next that meaning we're running the next method so we can run uh, so you can refer to as uh, running a method as uh, like running invoking calling a method I know these are different terms we can use to uh, say that we are running a method on an object so we are running the next method on the three on the number object which is three so this is this will return us f the next of the number so after three it count there is four right so it's gonna give us the next number so it's going to be four so if i run it so it didn't print anything because we have two uh, puts and if i run it again as you can see it is uh, printing four so we have a lot of different methods you can google and uh, search about it what are the methods for numbers what are the methods for uh, string so we can use them or we can make our own methods if we want so we will, later we're gonna run about them as well so four is the output of this uh, thing right so this is called the return value so return value is anything that after you fire a method uh, or if you invoke a, a method and then the value that gets returned is called the return value <coughs> so if another way of our running a method is we can put the parenthesis like this so in um, most programming languages you will see this syntax uh, dot next and then the parenthesis so if I run it again so the result is going to be same it's going to be 4 but in Ruby you can also uh, remove the parenthesis to make the syntax uh, more short so this this will also work dot next will also work alright so we learned about um, the return value which is basically the value that's returned from the method after we run, uh, run the method right so something we can do with the return value is we can store it in a variable let's say we can call it our next value this is our variable name and we can say equals to 3.next so it will store the anything that returns by this so it's going to be 4 and it will be saved inside the next value so if i put next value and if i run it so that is also same so another uh, important thing that you have to uh, remember is um, methods sometimes can take arguments so this method next doesn't take any argument so inside the parentheses we don't uh, put anything so it's not taking any argument but let's say for another method um for string you can say below over here let's say hello and there is a method on this object then the string object so you have to keep in mind that methods uh, belong to objects methods belong to objects and we can call them call or invoke them and get some return value or modify the object itself so depending on what the method is doing so uh, the string hello can has a method built in to ruby which is reverse dot if we do dot reverse what this will do is reverse the hello the opposite so side so if i put as you can see it reversed our string so it's uh, writing everything in the backwards direction from o to h and same thing you can do the parenthesis if you want but that's optional it's, it's gonna work without the parenthesis as well and um, <coughs> so what are arguments arguments are basically anything you pass inside the parenthesis 
and uh, for example let's say um, hello so there's another method called includes and inside the parentheses you can pass in uh, anything you want to check that in is included in the string uh, let's say um, double L is included in the string so you can do double L we can do that and we can run it and it's gonna return us a boolean if we wait so it's not includes it's include make sure the spelling is correct and so it's, it's giving us true so this method uh, and anytime you see a question mark so that means it's gonna return a boolean value so this is returning us a boolean return value so the argument is basically anything that we are passing so we are checking uh, we're passing to the method itself so we're passing in this string string h for example we're passing and this is called the argument or sometimes you can they can be also called as parameters parameters is also a way to refer them let's look at another method from string which is uh, if you want let's say you have your name and you want to make all of these uppercase so there is a method built into the string object which is called upcase and you can run this and if i run the code as you can see it upcase our string so it is uppercase all the letters also there is another method which is called swap case so let's say we are writing like this and we write swap case it will swap all the lowercase to uppercase and the uppercase to lowercase so if i run it as you can see it's printed mlv all right let's look at another uh, simple method which is insert and you can insert any type of string you want so it's called insert and this method takes two arguments so the first one is the index of where do you want to uh, add your uh, string so in programming everything we count from zero so this hello world this is at position zero the a e is at position one so that's two three four and this is five so we can say we want to insert insert at the fifth position i want, want to insert my name and it will return so it's going to take the string and it's going to insert it in this position and if i run it as you can see it inserted so if you want to insert in another position let's say three click on run and it will insert that inside on the third position after the third position and if you want something else you can do it as well so this these are awesome methods and they return string so there can be different type of uh, return so this one is returning boolean so you can put this inside an if statement and check and then take some action be, uh, depending on the boolean value true or false so these are very uh, handy and common methods in ruby you can use so all this time we are printing in our console using the puts command right so this is also a method so puts you can also fire it like this with the parentheses and inside you can put anything let's say i put my name and uh, hit run and it's gonna print that out in the console so this is also a method all right now i want to talk a little bit about methods in disguise so till this point we are using a lot of methods that you don't even know that these are called methods for example we are doing a lot of arithmetic operations right 3 plus 2 um, 2 plus 3 anything we are doing arithmetic so these are actually not syntax in ruby it's not you might be thinking this is built in and um, syntax but it's not so what basically we are doing when we do uh, 3 plus 2 so if i do puts 3 plus 2 we are uh, basically running <coughs> we're basically uh, running the plus method on 3 with the argument of 2 so this syntax is getting converted into 3 plus 2 something like this so we are calling the plus method on 3 with the argument of true so calling the plus method on 3 with the argument of 2 so everything is uh, in ruby is an object and object has met has method so numbers since number is also an object so the method uh, for adding is plus so if i run this this will do the same it will print out 5 in our console same is uh, same goes for other uh, arithmetic operators uh, minus as you can see after we did minus 
uh, we run the minus method on 3 with argument of 2 so it's uh, subtracting uh, 2 from 3 so anytime you see 3 minus 2 any sort of uh, number a mathematical operation so it's basically running the method on the tree and the argument is 2 so these are called uh, methods in disguise so you cannot see that it's a method but under the hood it, it is a method we are running a method on the object uh, on the number object so that's a very interesting thing to learn and the same is for string so we've been doing a lot of string concatenation so you are doing like uh, one string plus another string and if I run it so it's gonna give me hi alveol and the all in one line in the single string so this is also same uh, we are basically running the plus method on high with argument of alvi so you can do dot plus and if I run it as you can see it's giving us the same result so when you are running a method so it's optional in Ruby if you don't give the parentheses or you don't if you want to you want you can give the parentheses but it's up to you uh, generally if you are uh, passing in some arguments so it's better to give the parentheses so you understand that that's an argument but it's also without the uh, parentheses it will also work so if i run it so that's also same so all the objects have methods and we took a look in uh, different methods so we used swap case um, up case anything is there's a method you can run it with parentheses as well or without parentheses so it's optional for you have to decide if you want or no and that's pretty much it um, for the methods in disguise so since we already know that every object has methods and there is no exception to that so every object have a method so what about this puts we are running this without any uh, dot notation like we do um, let's say a something dot upcase so upcase is the method and we're calling it on the string then what about puts we are not is, since this is a method this must belong to some object so actually it, it does belong to an object and uh, this is called a kernel it's called the kernel object and we can uh, run our puts uh, something like this kernel dot puts and let's say a high hit run as you can see it's uh, giving us the output so you can think of kernel as a global type of object so you don't have to uh, explicitly say that kernel dot puts because this is the outermost um, object so ruby will automatically uh, replace all of these like puts method it, it, ruby already knows that this is a kernel method so you don't have to say kernel since this is sort of a global type of method, uh, global type of object, and uh, there are a lot of uh, methods in it, so you can call them directly in your code. You don't have to uh, specify them. So that's another thing to note. All right, now we will look at how we can make our own methods in Ruby. So we have some uh, reserved keywords in Ruby to make them. So it's def and and so these are some keywords in ruby and then this is a reserved you cannot use them as a variable name so you cannot say def equals uh, some string this is going to give you an error so if i run this code this will uh, surely give me some sort of error saying unexpected uh, syntax error so these are reserved also end so end uh, means the end of something some block end of a block uh, def, def is short for define uh, so for defining a method we will start by saying def and the method name let's say we want a method called say hi and you will end the block using the end keyword and anything inside the block we put that's going to be all our code that this method has for example we can put hi and just like um, we run the puts method we can same in same way so if we uh, we can run the puts method something like this so uh, running puts method we can run our say hi method that we defined ourselves in same way we can just say say underscore hi and we can put other parentheses so and uh, another thing you will say I mean I've been I mean using uh, underscore a lot and you can also use uh, camel casing like like this but you cannot have spaces 
so you can't say say space high space is not a valid variable name or method name uh, you cannot say uh, this has to be in one line any variable name method name has to be one line all right so like this we can run our say hi method that we defined over here and it will uh, run the any the code that's inside the method it will run it and it will just gonna output in the console so if i run it i say saying hi and you can do any more math operations we want let's say a uh, first name equals m anything we want so in the last we're gonna print out hi plus first name and if we run it so it's gonna basically run this block of code and it will um, output our, our stuff in the console so in other programming language you might see them um, calling them this function this, you can also refer this as function or method anything you want alright so how about we make an something more fun with methods so as you saw earlier we are using uh, methods and we're passing some sort of argument so when we make our own method we can still um, do that so for example let's say uh, we have a method called greeting and this can take an argument anything you want name uh, you can separate them by commas like age so we are taking two arguments and we can end the block and we can put um, hello name your age is age so now we can uh, run this method below our code below the method definition so you can do greeting that name and if we part in the second argument we could comma separate it let's say 12 and then we run it this will output here saying hello all of your age is 12 so what's the cool thing about methods is if we define it once then we can run it any times we want so we can run it again with a different name let's say alex 35 or 34 and run it so this code is getting run every time and we don't have to uh, write this uh, two times so it's automatically running our code uh, so it's a very good way to uh, not repeat the code that we write before so we just write define our method once and then we can use it any time we want for example a common uh, thing you can make is some sort of method that's do some calculation for example you can make a method called sum that takes two numbers x and y and it can can print or it can return so before we looked at this methods return some sort of data right so we can also return uh, in our method so you can say we can use the keyword called return and we can do anything we want so let's just say x plus one x plus y so it will return this value so if i run some uh, three and one seven if we run it so the value is getting returned but we are not printing it that's why it's not going to show here so in order to print you have to put like this and it's going to show in our console so this is getting uh, replaced by four and we are seeing four in our console also you can uh, save this in another variable called result if you want anything any variable name you can give it i'm, I'm going to call it result and you can save that in another variable and we can put result and that's going to do the same thing is it's going to print out four in our console as you can see it's printing out four so we can define methods and we can run them with uh, different arguments so it's going to give us different type of values we can do a uh, result to so with a different number let's say some random number and we can say puts result two and if i run it again as you can see it's giving us the sum of these two numbers so anything that's returned and we can uh, directly print them or use them somewhere so you can say uh, this returns some value let's add 99 to it so after adding 99 so you see this value is going to change now if i print result 2 this is going to be different as you can see the number is different so this is becoming a number and we are calling the plus method on this number again so because the return we are returning a uh, number from here so we can also do a uh, dot plus i think let's run it again that is also giving us the same output so and also if you want you can put the parentheses in here as well so in ruby that's optional but if you want you can put the parentheses as well as you can see we're getting our output in the console 
all right so now i will be talking about chaining methods um we'll look at built-in methods optional arguments scopes so let's start with uh, chaining methods first so chaining methods basically we can run multiple methods um the same time chain them together uh, for example let's say we have a variable a string and then we can do that string object dot upcase make it um uppercase and then we can also chain a down case method so as you can see we are getting back our original string so it's making upcase and also the return value this turns into the all the letters uppercase and then on that string we are uh, chaining another method called down case so we are first up upcasing it so we're making them uppercase then we are down casing so method chaining is basically you run multiple methods at the same time um for another example you can do dot plus you can add something um like hello and then we can run it so as you can see it's saying i'll be hello so dot plus is another method as you already know and uh, that's uh, in belongs to the string object and we are printing them in our console as you can see it is uh, giving us the result so method chaining is nothing complicated it just basically means you are running multiple uh, methods uh, chaining them together so it is possible to unchain methods and let's look at uh, built-in methods so let's say you want to look at all the methods that is available in this uh, string object so there is another method to get all the methods so it's actually called methods this will give you all the methods right so if i run this code and it will print as you can see it's printing all the name of the methods and there are different types as you can see some has the explanation some have some don't have anything some have two underscore some has a question mark so there are different types of these so these uh, symbols means different things so if i talk about them the question mark is basically uh, returns a boolean value as we already know so include if you want to check something is included or no you can use the include with a question mark and the explanation mark is basically means it's a dangerous method so and to underscore something is basically uh, it means converting to something converting so what are these things uh, what do they mean and so you already know that uh, question mark returns a boolean uh, what about the explanation mark so this is a dangerous method if you run this uh, on something let's say we have app case with the uh, uh, explanation right so if we first look at uh, the normal one which is up case and let's put some name after that so let's run it so the up case is giving us the upper case version and later we're printing our original variable right and it's giving us the lower case the original one but if we use the dangerous method what this is gonna do is gonna um it's gonna actually modify our original variable into up case as well so if i run it again as you can see it modified our original variable so that's why it's very dangerous sometimes you don't want your uh, variables to modify get modified the original one you want to keep them uh, same as before so but in some cases if you want you can use that explanation any methods that has an explanation and uh, you can use that another another one is uh, two underscore something so this is for converting some data type so let's say we have a number that but it's inside the string let's say we have 20 balls and you want to get um, 20 from here so you can you want this is a string right you want to convert it into an integer and maybe you want to do some math operations and then we can do total number of balls equals so you can run a uh, we can run a converting method which is for converting from string to integer is to i so that means uh, the i means integer so we are converting this string to integer so anytime in a string you have some sort of number so it will only take that number and ignore all the text part but if you don't have any number it will just return zero so after we converted now if we put as you can see we are getting 20 as an output and you can also do math operation dot plus let's say we want to add five more balls and then if i run that became 25 so if you ever want to check all the methods that an object holds you can just write uh, the object and then dot 
methods and also you can sort them so since this thing is this is actually an array so if i do p and print it as you can see it's giving us a list with the brackets right with the comma separated value so this is an array you can also so array has another method called sort so you can sort them by uh, letters so if i click run again as you can see it's giving the symbol first then starting with the a's a b c so it's like all categorized correctly so you can use that to uh, check all the methods and objects is holding or most of the time you can just google uh, let's say you want to convert a string to number number to string you can just google and find the method that way that's much easier way but uh, if you in any time if you want to just see all the methods you can use the method built in to get uh, print the list of the methods which is called dot methods all right now let's talk about optional arguments so be before we uh, learned how we can make our own uh, methods right let's say sum of x y and then an end the block and we can return x plus y and it is working it's giving us our sum but in some cases you might uh, not need all the parameters uh, from the user right so you might only need a one and the other one can be optional so you can also give a default value but let's say by default is going to be zero so if i don't or let's make it something else by default is going to be one and put three over here so this will all work because our y is now optional because we give our y a default value of one so this is not a nil and this is a one now and it will work every time so, so if i run our code as you can see it's giving us four with only one optional uh, argument we gave one argument but if you want you can give another one and then this default value is going to be overridden by the new value so it's going to be three plus three instead of three plus one now so if i run it again it's going to be six so that's a uh, so that is basically called uh, optional arguments in ruby so your methods can have optional arguments if you want them to be all right now let's talk about uh, scopes uh, variable scopes uh, in in ruby so let's say we have a variable called count equals to zero and we have a method called increment so what we are trying to do is basically increment our count variable which is in this scope in the global scope but we are trying to access it inside our scope of the method which is this this in you know, anything between the end and the method definition this is a scope on, on its own so if i run our code as you can see it's giving me an error it's saying uh, increment count undefined method plus for an nail class so it's basically count doesn't exist inside this scope if we want to we can make another variable called count equals three so this we are declaring a new variable called count and if i see in the console and if i puts our count you can see it's printing four but without this ruby has no idea that account exist out of this scope so you cannot access uh, something that's not in your scope so for something like this you can use an something called an instance variable which to make an instance variable you just put the add before the variable name and we can do count like this and we can print them as well so if i run it as you can see it's working it was zero and it got incremented to one but normally by default if you have something in this scope and this scope ruby has no idea that count exists out of this scope so that's something you have to keep in mind uh, when working with variables so it can be very tricky sometimes okay let's talk about arrays and hashes in ruby so as we talked before this arrays are list of things or list of other data types so we can have an uh, array of numbers we can have and to make an array just put the square brackets and put uh, some numbers or any type of data you want your name say we have a float and this is called an array which has a contains a list of data and to print it you can simply write puts numbers and run our code as you can see it's printing each of the items in a new line but if you want all in one line you can do p and that will give you a nice little um, formatted way of seeing the data like this and for accessing certain items from an array 
how can we uh, access some items let's say we want we don't want to print the entire array instead we just want the first item so as we saw earlier we count from zero in programming so index is zero based indexed so in string we saw we can uh, insert in a certain position and we have to give the index but we have to count from zero same goes with arrays so three is at position zero four is at position one and so on so if we want to print let's say a position let's say the first item we're gonna write the variable name or the array name and we're gonna put some square brackets and inside here we're gonna write the number of the index so in this case if we want to print the first item we're going to write zero and if i run my code as you can see it is printing out three in our console and there are methods as well for accessing items so instead of saying the brackets and writing the index manually you can just say dot first which comes with the array object and if i run this this will also print the first item and if you want to print the last item similarly you can do dot last and that will give us 3.45 which is the last item of the array so the last item is at the last index so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 so we can also access the last item saying that brackets and 6 and run it again and this will give us the last item of the array as you can see it's printing out the last item again so let's say you have a dynamic array and you don't know the size or the last index how many items are there so in that case let's say we don't want to get with the last uh, method how can we get the last item so something you can do is um, get the length of the array and minus one from it so the length of the array is uh, how many items are in the array so there are let's make it shorter so there is uh, three items in the array and the length is three so if there is three items the length equals three so the length is three but our index is not three that's zero one and two so our, we should search at the two index which is over here the last items so we are um, minus one we are subtracting one to get the last index so three is not the last index the length of the array the last index is minus one so this will also print out the last item of the array so if you run it as you can see it's giving us the item also there is another syntax if you just want shorter version you can just say minus one that's also going to give you the last item so this is basically how you uh, access items in an array um, let's say you want to push or add something to this array how can you add something more to the array so if i print out my array it's gonna give me three four and five let's say somewhere in the program we want to add a six or ten to this numbers list we can just say numbers dot push and this is a method for pushing some item in the array and this takes an argument any data type you want let's say you want ten and let's push another string my name and run our array or run our code and it will push these two items in our array and in the console you can see it's giving us three four five ten and uh, my name and another uh, there is another syntax of pushing something to the array which is uh, you put the double less than sign and you can put some number let's say 30 342 and if i run my code that's gonna also give me uh, add the items in the array so this also returns the array so if you want you can chain multiple methods and keep adding numbers let's say we want to add multiple numbers and let's run our code and it will add all of these in the array as you can see because uh, this syntax will re return the array as well now what about uh, deleting items for an array let's say we have three numbers we want to delete the last item of the array so you can do there is a method called pop for deleting the last item so if i run it that will delete the last item from the array and there are uh, different methods for removing array uh, from different position as well and uh, what what if you want to remove the first item you can do numbers dot shift so that is going to remove the three and we only have one item left and let's say you want to add something in the front in, of the array so there's another method for that 
which is called unshift let's say we want to add first item string in the array so that's gonna add first item and there's going to be four as you can see first item and four because we remove the last item which is five with the pop with the shift we remove the three and we unshifted so we added in the front first item and four is remaining from before so this is uh these are very common practice of uh, doing uh, things with the array data type so if you are working with a list of items let's say you are working with some database and it's returning a list of users you can store them in an array manipulate if you want to delete remove whatever you want to do and then save them to the database again so this is a very handy data structure we use them every day uh, for uh, writing our programs so this is a very common data structure and let's look at hashes after this so in many programming language uh, almost every we have uh, this data structure which is called hash and we use it for storing key value pairs information so let's say you want to store some sort of key value pairs and keep track of something you can use a hash for that so in other languages it might be called uh, object or dictionaries so they are mostly commonly known as hashes so so for creating a new hash what you can do is uh, first of all name a variable so i want to store my user data so i'm gonna say user equals and you make the curly braces like this the opening and closing curly braces and inside you put your all the key value pairs information so user has a name and to set this equal to some data so we want this to point to something so you're gonna put the equal and the arrows arrow right arrow like this or the greater than sign and we're gonna say the name is my name is and you can put a comma and we can put some other data age and we can say favorite color and we can say the color red and if i print it as you can see it is printing our hash like this but if you want some specific data from the hash let's say the name you can uh, open up the square brackets and write the key so on the left side this is the key and this is the value on the right side so you have to write the key name on the inside the square brackets so if i run now my code as you can see it's giving me my name back also you can use symbols so in ruby we have something called symbol which you have to write the colon and some name sort of like a variable you can cannot have spaces okay it can be like this so it have to be connected and let's say favorite colors and now if i run my code as you can see it's not working because we are using a symbol and uh, but we are using a string over here so this also has to be same it has to be a symbol and if i run it again with a symbol this time it's gonna print me out my name also if we have a we can convert our string into a symbol as well so to sim will convert this string into a symbol and we can get the data back which is uh, name is referring to this data pointing to this data and if you want the age same thing we can write age inside and on our code and this will give us our age and um, there is another syntax of doing this uh, much more easier so you can say name and put a colon like this and let's say our name is this you can same way age 13 uh, put something else like favorite color red this will also work but remember when you are accessing the data this has to be a symbol so don't forget to write the colon before the symbol like this and if i run my code now this will also work as you can see it's printing my name so you can use a hash for many different things whether it's um, storing some sort of data and maybe you want to make an array of hashes you can do that or you want to keep track of some numbers so there are many use cases of hashes you can use them to do different things also if you want you can also change the variable and um, the value of the key so let's say i want to change the name to john and if i run my code this will get changed to john now and it in our console to print the new variable and if i try to access something that's not available let's say something random and if i run my code 
as you can see it's not giving me anything it's giving me empty because there is nothing uh, this key doesn't exist in this hash so you can set something uh, default so if you set some data that's gonna be on if the symbol name doesn't exist then it's gonna give us back the default data so this is the default data so something doesn't exist on the user hash and that's why we are getting uh, this is the default data anything that's inside the default value over here so that's getting print so this is one way of uh, doing things in hashes uh, if you want you can also write um, hash in a different way which is using the hash dot new this is the constructor notation and you can set the data if we want let's say we want name my name and we can put user and then we can see the data in our console over here as you can see it's giving us back the hash so this is how you can use hashes maybe to store different sort of data you want so it's very handy data structure and it's most commonly used you can use um, hashes with arrays if you want you can store the user one let's say I have another user user 2 equals hash new 0 now we can make an array of these two users and this is like a users list so if I print it with the P as you can see this is a list of hashes so you can also store this let's say users list and you can print them as well so you can do different things with arrays and hashes together uh, use them for different use cases in your program also if you want to get all the keys from a hash you can also do that so let's say you want to get all the keys from the user object or user hash and you can just say user dot keys and it will give you all the keys that are available so as an array so we only have name so it's giving me one also same for values so the value we have is alvi so it's gonna give me only array of our, a string which is this value so you can use them to uh, either get the key values uh, explicitly which one you want so that's pretty much it for hashes and arrays so these are very easy um, topics next we're gonna look at uh, conditions in Ruby okay so now let's talk about conditional statement if else statement in Ruby so this is the most common use cases in programming that we use if statements and else statement to do certain things so if some condition is true and based off that we can uh, take our decision right so let's say uh, let's write a boolean so you have to remember that in condition is all about uh, what is the boolean value ref uh, getting evaluated to is it true or false so to write a if statement we basically uh, compare something that returns a boolean or you can just pass a boolean it's, uh, directly in there so we make a if statement by saying if and then we can s end the block and after if we write our condition so if something gets true then anything um, inside this block will run so this block will run if true only if the condition over here is true so if I run my code it will um, print this so and you can also put any condition you want 3 equals equals 3 run it so if the condition is satisfied and it becomes true only then this block will run but let's say 3 equals equals 5 then this block inside will not run that's basically uh, when we use our if statements also there is else if um, also the else statement so if I show you guys if this fails then what can we do is run anything any code inside the else block which is inside this block right so the else block will run <coughs> if I run my code and it will print the else block will run because this condition now becomes false and this code is ignored the inside the if statement and we run our else statement code so this is very common in programming that you use a uh, conditional statement to do different things to check whether uh, let's say we have a string let's say var1 equals I love cat we can check var1 dot include if it includes cat then we can say he likes cats else we can say he likes other animals 
then if I run out my code then it will uh, print me depending on this condition so as you can see it's giving me he likes cat because um, my string includes cat but if I uh, change it to dog run my code it will give me the other uh, output he likes other animals but let's say you want to do another condition for checking dog instead of writing another if statement you can write an else if and say else if and like this and you can write var1 include dog and then you can say he likes dogs and now if i run my code as you can see it's giving me he likes dogs but what if you want to check if he likes dogs and cats at the same time so something we can do is we can have a if statement saying that if he likes dogs and he also likes um, he likes cats and he also likes dogs then we can put he likes all my favorite animals now this condition will become true and we can get uh, our output so for this expression to become true both of these uh, condition has to be true so true and true is false are uh, true so if i go below and say here puts true and true true and false false and false and run my code so true and true is true true and false will give me false and false and false will give me false so uh, with this and what's happening is both of the condition has to be true for the expression to become true or it will never become true but if you want one of them is true uh, if either one of them is true then you want to return true then you can use the or statement or keyword or you can say true or false this will give me true as you can see it's giving me true and if you want uh, make one, both of them false it's not gonna give you a true it's gonna give you a false because with or either one of them has to be true if both are true then that's okay it's gonna give you true back but if none of none is true then it's not gonna give you if none is true or we'll give false else if a minimum of one is true then it will return true and also we have a not keyword not is basically uh, changes our condition or changes our booleans to the other one so not true will become false not f not false will become true so if i run my code so as you can see it's giving me not true is false not false is true so this is basically uh, some ways you can use conditions so for an if block to run the condition has to evaluate to true or it's never gonna run all right so another uh, simple way of doing this same thing is using a case like this you can use a case and put the variable that you want to uh, compare or something and you can say when when it's cat when it's cat then we can say he likes cat i can say when dog he likes dog else we can say he likes other animals this is a shorter syntax of doing it find on my code it is giving me he likes other animals because the string is not matching we're not doing includes we are checking the actual string which is i love dogs that's not equal to cat or dogs all right let's talk about loops in ruby so loops are way to uh, loop through your uh, arrays or loop through some numbers and do something with the data let's say we have uh, some numbers one two three four five six and we want to loop through each of the numbers and we want to print the number times uh, five let's say we want to do that how can we do that so we have to first loop through our number so for looping and getting each of these numbers we can use a for loop so we can write for items or num in numbers do and then we can end our block so this is the syntax for writing a for loop in ruby so, it, so the num is the all it, the each items will loop through in numbers and it will give me the num right so this will run a few times uh, depending on the length of the array now we can put num times 5 then to multiply it by 5 and give me the result below as you can see it's giving me uh, 5 times 1 is 5 5 times 2 is 10 so as, uh, as you can see it's giving me all the appropriate values 
and you can if you want you can store them in another array let's say times 5 equals empty array and you can just say times 5 dot push and if we print times 5 with the p and run our code as you can see we're getting the a new array of uh, which we have multiplied all our current items by 5 so this is a use case we can use for loops for looping through arrays so this is the most common use cases in ruby also in ruby we have something called iterators that we can use to uh, do similar things uh, looping uh, so it's, it's a type of method that comes with um, ob some objects so let's say numbers has an iterator called dot each and to write this we have to write dot each then we have to write do and we have to put our column size and inside we have to put uh, our uh, num variable right what we are gonna call each of the numbers then we can also do the same thing like this as you can see it's giving me the correct output uh, it's multiplying everything by 5 this is another shorter syntax uh, if you want to use iterators uh, some built in sort of method type of thing and you can also use that if you want another way to do the same thing is uh, we give ruby a block instead of uh, writing all this code we can do something like this we can give it a block and we can take num in here and then we can push it like this and if i run my code as you can see this is also working so this part right here is called a block so you can also plus block inside a method and it will do the same thing uh, as we defined earlier so let's say uh, we want to make this and we are pushing it right instead of pushing we want uh, some method to do the calculation and return an array itself so there is a method called map we can use so you can use map and instead of uh, writing this what we can do is num times 5 so what this is gonna do is gonna make a new array and return it in this one line so if i print it as you can see it's giving me the same result but in a more shorter syntax in one line we can do that and then if you want you can uh, you know times 5 you can define that variable equals and set it directly instead of uh, pushing around everything and i can run my code again so that also works very easily in ruby so that's pretty much it um we learned a lot in this video maybe i will make a part two later uh, discussing about uh, lambdas and object oriented programming in ruby but these are all the basics if you are getting into started into programming these are all the basics that you have to learn um, i would say practice more uh, more on uh, try to solve programming problems on lead code or something like that and practice every day and hopefully you'll be uh, become better at ruby so i'll see you guys in the next video probably i'm gonna make a, another part two of this series and it will be about uh, object oriented programming and more advanced stuff and we'll maybe make some more uh, quizzes and everything all right see you guys